and cafe and a zero percent win rate on theme so this is going to be a tough series nonetheless but let's see if they're going to be able to bring enough firepower to the table to get over tsm anyway as we're going live now folks with the first map here on villa well, my friend, we're headed to Italy for the first map. As you said, we're going to be here on Villa. Let's jump right into it, folks. Thatch are going to be our first ban here. Not very surprising at all when it comes to Villa. Villa, a map overall that we've been seeing a lot of play on within like the, you know, recent year, I would say. And ever since it really came out, Villa, a map that's been a favorite of a lot of pro teams. And uh, even more so now with the recent, you know, lighting change makes it a little bit easier to see, as well as with the skin bans that we now have. Nobody can be running any of those pesky skins that were so difficult uh, to see on this map. We're going to end up with both a Thatcher and an Ace Band to remove our two attackers from the pool, meaning Hard Breach is going to be a little bit of extra effort, at least for TSM at the start and later for Disrupt. We'll see Kaid get knocked out first on the Defender Bands, followed up by Valkyrie, which has started to become more and more of a common ban, even outside of the maps where she was already banned out every once in a while. So that's going to extend into this series as well. Bands are out of the way, though, so we can get into the first round and see how exactly these two teams shape up finally. All right, well, Disrupt starting on defense. We're headed to AVG first here. G9 going to be playing more of an aggressive operator. Malusi. Again, folks, if you guys haven't been tuning in recently or just coming back to Siege, this is J9's rookie season. So uh, he was a sub for the Sonics for a while. Now, you know, fully fledged out on his own team with Disrupt. And I, I really am curious about the map changes here. As you were saying, Disrupt's map pool is very widespread. They don't have any maps that they truly favor over another. But now that they have J9 in here, this could change up a lot. We could be seeing a completely different Disrupt. Absolutely the case. Well... Hopefully it's going to be some increases to them because like Jesse was saying, they're one of the few teams kind of at risk at this point to be in the possible relegation pool when we get later on in this year. And I know they don't want to be considered to be in that pool, so they very much have to show both us here on the casting desk and of course the folks at home that that should not be the case. Let's get into it though. Setup's going to look uh, fairly standard as far as I can tell here so far. Over here on the AVG setup, reinforces everything looking relatively standard. The only thing we're not seeing right now that I can pick out is going to be the Wamai, because sometimes you see the combo of those two running there, but the exclusion of that is more than likely being made up for by the Malusi currently. So nothing lost to a huge degree there at this moment. Yeah, it's really only throwable, so they'll have to worry about. But as you guys can see, TSM came stacked with those. We have, what is that? 3-9? Uh, that's 12. 12. They have 12 yeah. stuns. 12 stuns right now. So there's there's so much throwable utility that they have. So they can literally burn through all of the ADSs with only half of that. So while my wouldn't change up too many things, obviously he'd still eat up a couple of those. But nothing that the Banshees can't slow down. Other than that, looking, of course, to delay things like Drone Intel one as well with the Mutant. Seems like that's going to work for a pretty standard setup when it comes to this site. As far as the action is concerned for TSM, we do have a few of them already entering the building, mainly through Art Studio right now, and that seems to have just to allow Achieve to get in there and knock out some of the floorboards, which he's already done. We'll now rotate over, and he's going to work on some drone work here with his teammates as they're moving in to clear out the remainder of the first floor just to make sure that Disrupt didn't put anyone else down here to try to isolate out any pressure. A little bit of utility getting gotten rid of there as well with the explosives. And TSM picking and choosing the pieces that they want to get rid of so they can take map control properly here and handle what DG is throwing at them. DG still with full map control for the time being, just not playing around with study, much rather handle the top of main stairs and keep this away from TSM as long as possible. Don't have any grenades to worry about either, so they can contest this for quite a while. Just going to have to worry about these stun grenades and concussions coming in. That's going to make the gunfights pretty easy for TSM as they flood the entire kill feed here, picking up quick three kills. DG all of a sudden on their last leg. Yeah, kill feed telling the whole story right now. Unfortunately, not much in the way of any sort of individual response at this point from DG. There's going to be an attempt at it from J9, but it's not going to be found. J9 O gets knocked out here. Retro will try and hold back Bolo as he swings around the bookcase corner of 90, but the smoke charge is a little bit too short, so Bolo is still able to get the angle he needs, as you can see right here, to pick up the final kill and give the first round quite easily over to TSM. Yeah, very patient TSM uh, being shown here early on, and I, I think that's a very smart way to start things off here for TSM, see how DG's going to act on this defense, and they got somewhat aggressive, put their faces in places where they, it was not supposed to be. TSM takes those off and takes the round as well, so pretty quick 
round there, very short-lived by DG. They still had plenty of time as well, and that was why it was so very peculiar. You know, there was a lot of time with uh, for them to work and lean on that utility to make the life a little bit more difficult for TSM, but I guess they felt as though they could take the gunfights, but as we all saw, really didn't work out for them. Yeah, not really much in the way of roaming pressure coming out that round either from DG, considering the TSM. To be fair, played a pretty small part of the map, so the only player that was out and about looked like it was J9O, and he wasn't really playing in a position where he would have met anyone from TSM, seeing as they executed almost entirely from the south side of the building in that previous round. Uh, but yeah, would like to see a little bit more of that going into the next rounds. That's a large part of why TSM had such an easy job setting up for their eventual execute. And as you saw before that, taking out choice pieces of utility in the process without really having to worry about any interruption from a roaming Malusi or another operator. So we'll see how that gets changed up since now they're playing downstairs and inherently just because of the site choice, there does need to be a little bit more activity across the entire map here for DG and TSM now as well. Exactly. You have to be really concerned about the uh, AVG area, the um, uh, Aviator Games area up top. So uh, that, that's the main area that sits on top of the B bomb site slash A area for living room. And uh, it's a lot of good verticality if the offense is able to get control of it. But we'll have to see what TSM wants to take this like. So probably similarly to the last round, we can expect some early hop-ins here from TSM, but probably not much in the way of actual action here. Very much taking the ground that is given to them for free by their early drone work here. They'll have no problem walking in and clearing out areas like that, but... All right, we're going to see a few of the roamers get isolated out near top red. That's both NJR and J9O, although NJR specifically may have not gotten spotted by the drone. Either way, he's going to decide to go back down and try to hold an angle at the bottom of red stairs. Away from that, still a lot of control happening on the north side of the building here over towards Trophy and Statuary going to TSM. But not much progress on moving further south than that as of yet. Not too much of an issue, though, considering we're only one minute into the round. You know, speaking on the lineup that TSM has been bringing so far, I, I've been really enjoying it going into round two, especially. This looks like a lot of comfortable things for all of these guys to be playing. Even Geo on a uh, more frag centric hard breacher, uh, even though you do still obviously have to play, you know, somewhat passive to begin with Habana. We've seen a million people they'll pop off immediately after they get done with that hard breaching utility. It's because they do have that stun grenade as well as a three speed with a damn good gun. Makes a lot of fun to play. So we'll see if Geo can uh, light up the scoreboard this time around here for TSM. But the rest of them as well achieved on his very well-known buck. Chala has been showing up on the Nomad all season long. This just looks like a very healthy lineup for TSM. Achieved did initially get drawn in over towards the 90 corner after some of those shots came out from shuttle. But the actual first fight is going to occur at the bottom of the Astro stairs. We have this bit of a mini setup here for... Well, it's currently Retro having to play off of and doing a darn good job of it. Still has all three of his smoke charges as well. Successfully taking out Geo has eliminated quite a bit of firepower here from the TSM roster and at minimum brings it down to an uneven duel when they eventually need to execute, which that time point is coming up very soon. Retro is now using his smoke charges and there's under 50 seconds remaining, meaning he's going to be able to chain all three of these in a row. NJR though finds revenge for the earlier loss of a teammate as they take out Shala, or excuse me, just adds on to that and continues to push the advantage further for DG in this round, bringing it down to a 5v3. NJR, so far the lowest at under 25, but no signs of any progress here for TSM, really. And TSM stumped right now, can't get any progress made. They've finally chosen to go for some top pressure right now as the Chief is pushing into Gun Vault, but J9 stops one. Actually, through verticality, Chief gets the refrag, though, but I believe it's too little too late uh, as TSM actually ends up lighting up the scoreboard again here. It's down to Reed in retro, but only two seconds remain. DG going to play safe. Reed gets the last kill onto Achieved, and DG walks away with their first round. TSM maybe getting a little bit too comfortable with themselves here in round two, kind of take the same pacing as the previous round. Although it did not occur to them, it seems, until late into the round, just the raw amount of resistance they would have encountered by trying to go down in through the bottom of the, that Astro Stairs push, where they eventually got delayed, as you saw mm -hmm. in the late round two, tried to switch it up and throw the extra pressure back over onto the upstairs area in the AVG sites, but uh, too little too late at that point due to the lack of time. I think that the main thing was is that TSM goes for the top take, right? They go they go clear master and they're going to actually try and uh, take control of the living room area by pushing, you know, clock as well as mudroom, putting the pressure on there and isolating the red hallway while also not allowing the people upstairs inside of AVG to rotate over towards statue and trophy. That was the whole game plan for them. But, you know, th things went awry once NJR started getting kills. They didn't expect him to have those cross angles that he had at his disposal from red stairs and they continued to get caught 
caught off guard by his positioning. It was truly NJR that slowed down that entire round for TSM and made it damn near unwinnable. Talked about how we needed to see some better roaming presence from DG after the first round, and thankfully for them, that's exactly what we ended up getting. So a massive improvement for DG coming off the first round. And now it's allowed them to immediately tie the game up at one to one. Going to look to improve that record for the defense here now as they go over to Trophy and Statuary and directly defend these sites this time around. See if things will work out pretty well for them here. Oh, I'm excited for this, John. Looks like we're going to be having a closet hold here. All the ADS is dedicated into Master. So that's exactly how they're going to set this up. The reinforcements split and rotation through the middle. J9... Does he have his own shield? He does, but it seems that it's already been set up inside of the bathroom. It's where the faith has been placed, clearly in the new member of Disrupt, putting him in a very, very rough position like this, where he needs to watch out for every single step due to the amount of angles that could be presented against him if he's not careful with his more aggressive movement and trying to pick up kills here. Other than that, though, if he decides to stay in the corner, he's got a pretty good chance to pick up at least a one-for-one -one. Pretty good opportunity to push a little bit further than that as well, depending on the utility usage from TSM. But we'll check in with him once players start to get a little bit closer. There's definitely some sort of awareness from TSM. They may have something going on there, but also we usually see caution from the attackers and trying to get up onto this outer lip over by Master Bath and Bedroom in the first place. Not just going to be J9 holding it either. You've also got NJR currently in the inside of Bedroom holding an angle on one of the windows, hoping to catch players after they come up from Repel or while trying to transition throughout that outer lift. Other than that, though, again, slow start here, although there is going to be a bit of a battle between Achieved and another player above him. Not much in the way of damage coming out from either side of that, but Chala does take some heat elsewhere on the map. And this is where things are going to get dangerous. There's still vertical play that you can play into the closet. J9 gets Merc through a stun, though. Fully blind, but it still works out for him as he just pre-fires through the bars. Still inside of the closet. Full white once again, but nobody wants to deal with him. Charlie, you got to jump in here, friend. ARX eats J9 alive, but it's immediately traded out. Good job here by DG on at least forcing the fights in relatively even, or in the case of the closet push, sometimes uneven against TSM's favor anyway, terms there to try and keep the overall manpower even throughout the round itself. NJR takes one more strike from the main master door, but unfortunately has to expose himself on the retreat due to that hole over in the trophy wall, or excuse me, the uh, statuary wall. And as a result of that, Geo is going to be able to pick up a quick pick here and bring it down to a 3v2, putting TSM in control once again. Well, bad news bears for the defense. Reed's dead, which means no toxic babes to assist with the situation. They do still have a nitro cell that could come in quite handy if needed, but drones play is still going on for TSM, gathering that information needed to make this execution go flawlessly. Achieved still downstairs as well, so the skeleton key... Could work wonders, especially on Retro's positioning. Leans out two people there. Bolo takes him down, left up to shuttle on this one versus three. We've seen him do these before, but he's going to need to do it again. 15 seconds remain. He's going to play the vertical play with that Nitro Cell, but they're going to need some site presence, or at least some site intel to assist in that. Otherwise, it's going to be all done off of audio. Plant coming out now. Can that Nitro Cell possibly get him? It can't. Geo getting away with his life as well. Granted, it is very, very slim, but this is more than likely going to be a round one here for TSM as Shuttle dons the top of the staircase. Bolo takes him down, and TSM claims round three. A bold strategy from Disrupt, and it nearly works too up until we get into that very, very late round portion when the players who were extended over towards Master, uh, most notably J9, of course, who had to go there with very little support, ends up getting caught out. And when those players are dealt with without adequate trades to make up for it, that's when we start to see TSM really take control and just a slow roll into their attempted plant at the very end there, which goes well for them. So they'll take the lead at two to one start to push ahead of DG again here on the attack for Villa as DG are going to shift back over to the aviation and games room to try this for a second time after failing on their first attempt back on round one. Shouldn't be too bad of an idea, to be honest with you. I, I mean, that first round just going awry because, uh, like what we talked about before, just a little too aggressive on the defensive side, and TSM knows how to shoot back. So let's let's slow it down a bit, make TSM fight for that map control instead of giving it to them, and things should go somewhat better for them. I, I'm not going to, you know, guarantee results, but I'm just saying that it could go a little bit better. Well, we'll see. Just a little bit. We'll see if that changes up on this round. More importantly, if TSM is going to have just as easy of a time playing 
for utility selection and knocking those out. You'll note there's a pretty different operator lineup, though, when it comes to the defense for this one. No Malusi in play. I believe the Bandit is new as well, so a little bit of a different style being taken here from Disrupt to hopefully try and slow down TSM's attack. Yeah, they've shifted things around to actually counter TSM on a master take if they end up going for that. But what we saw last time was a study side take that was very, very patient. And the problem right now that I'm seeing for this lineup for DG and their positioning is Shuttle is extremely exposed here, especially because Chal is on the Ayana. If they're able to burn out all these ADSs and get the one my disc is gone, all they have to do is toss a nade, and this man is dead to rights from from any which way. It really doesn't matter. They can also buck from underneath and handle it in a very similar fashion. Lean up. Looks like he's got a bandit battery on the hatch above him as well to hopefully help out with any attempts to knock him out of that position. Considering that Habana has been a common play point here. Reinforced shield also on top of that too. To be playing around this window, it's actually delaying quite a bit right now as TSM have been trying to figure out the easiest way to kill him over the last minute or so, but so far at least have been unsuccessful. Once again, not going to be alone in this fight either as NJR once again is nearby the very risky, riskily positioned player. I don't know that's a word, but either way, NJR is going to be nearby trying his best to pick up additional kills or at the very minimum trade in the event that player goes down, which we're going to see oh, right there. Now. Yep, there's the grenade coming in, and Shuttle's now been downed, and he's on an island, folks. No one's coming to save him. Shuttle, sadly, probably going to die alone inside of study. But it does not mean that the round's over just yet. DG still have plenty of time, as well as the ability to refrag if needed. But just know that no one's going to be sprinting to his uh, you know, saving grace anytime soon. Halfway through the round now, though, as TSM has still taken their time. They're through quite a bit of utility, though, checking in on that, and... Well, I mean, looking through the utility pieces here, still have quite a bit of drones inside of that info department as well. Merc finally picking up the first kill. That's going to be under Reed, though, not Shuttle, who's still down. So technically a three versus five rolling into the last minute here. They seem to have an idea about what's waiting around the corner here as well. There's the confirm on Shuttle. I take back what I said. They have no idea, it seems, that NJR is still hiding at top main stair. He pokes right out and Merc is none the wiser. Finds a quick, clean kill there finally start trading some of this action back to what up until this point has been a very TSM sided round. Biggest issue for TSM though has been safely trying to get themselves map control. A lot of their players as you can see are still stuck either outside of study or back on the first floor and they can't afford that luxury anymore. They're going to attempt to pressure NJR out and it works although they do lose a player in the process bringing it down to a 3v2. 30 seconds remain. They've got outside site control. Now it's time for the execute. And this is where things can get fun. Chala's still alive on the Yana. And if you guys haven't been watching for a while, she has a hologram that she can put out and you can actually follow in and refrag. It's basically like a drone that respawns over time, but obviously it is a form of herself. They now have the intel on what the, well, at least one of the members lays and pre-fires here for Chala, but he actually gets taken out by Retro. Retro picks up two now. Is down to Retro and J9 up against Bolo, but I don't believe Bolo has time. Diffuser down behind the game's bar, and no, he doesn't. It's a crossfire between the two. Retro catches Bolo in the face, and DG pick up their second defensive round. One missed piece of info in this game can cost you a whole lot, and in this specific instance, just costed TSM around. He had been hiding over on the 90 corner for a good minute or so prior to that, but unfortunately, either due to a lack of drones or a lack of time to drone it, TSM did not go back to check that 90 corner down the hallway, and as a result, he's allowed to push forward and completely destroy the remaining attackers alive in that round. Once again, a good recovery from Disrupt after dropping the previous round, and just like before, it's going to allow them to tie things up at 2-2 two two now. Just a very strange round overall. Good patience by DG, but a lot of missteps there by TSM, specifically with their intel. They had seven drones alive while Merc was pushing into study and gets caught off guard by NJR at the top of main. Like, that, that's things that you should know, especially with seven drones up. It's very weird that they didn't go for a redrone there or to try and get more intel before eventually working their way towards the rooms that are closer to site. So kind of a missed up there by them. I'd really like to see them, you know, try and get some more intel, especially when you have so many drones at your disposal. It's just, uh, it's a very weird thing because it's like, okay, that, that's something that it should just be rudimentary. You know what I mean? Yeah. A win on that previous site now starts to unlock some of the already successful sites for Disrupt here as well. If you know, we're going to go back down into Living Room, where TSM also had struggles the last time this was played. So, possibility here for DG to take the lead, I believe, for the first time so far in this map, and try to start pushing themselves ahead a little bit closer to the win here. Either way, good job by DG so far on keeping up, and especially in the late round, trying to swing things back under their control in that last round. Nice play being made there by Retro. 
Oh, beautifully done by Disrupt, especially capitalizing on that mistake, right? I mean, Retro uh, all the way off in 90, as you were saying, and then rotates up to bar as soon as they get into sight. He's able to pick up those two kills that clutch things out. But now we're into round five here. TSM and DG all tied up as the drones spin up. It's master take for TSM right now. They're going to be playing into the living room once again. Last time we were here, TSM tried splitting the map right at uh, the short end of the 90 hallways and just tried well, bull facing right into the actual living room area. Didn't work out too well for them as the picks were plentiful for DG. Bolo also holding the uh, 90 window for a little bit, or not the 90, the connector window there a little bit as well, just to make sure that no one from the red stairs is going to try to do any swinging over towards Trophy. Right to do that too, because you can see NJR has been in this position halfway down the red stairs ever since we saw players from TSM first top in the building. Once again, he's not alone here either. J90 and I believe Shuttle are close by over in the AVG area should they need to try and work for some outplay in the event that he goes down. That's exactly the case. Retro holding that destructed wall downstairs too behind it. I believe the reinforced shield if they're playing it the same way they did last round. Uh, but TSM are now aware of this position since this was the same one that was used the last time this site was played. And it does look like they're trying to get Achieved and Merc in position to force Retro out of that spot right now. And there it is. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how well it's going to work, though. He does still have ADSs here as well. They have so much utility dedicated to keep Retro safe. And the other difficult part is the verticality to get him out of where he is, is actually inside of the vault. Either that or you have to move up to the hallway in order to fight that angle, which would be even more awkward. So TSM is trying to handle it through other means right now, and that's why that timer just continues to tick down. TSM can't find the answer to Retro being in sight. I think I think that their only avenue right now would be to try and clear out the rest of the utility and force him into a bad position. They do have some verticality, but Achieve's going to get lit up through that exact same hole. This is just That's a annoying. stumped TSM. The Chief's going to get hit by one bullet. Either way, though, finally things get started right under the 42nd mark, and it's going to be Merc leading the charge there, catching NJR finally, after he'd been looking for an opportunity to frag out for so long. Now we're going to see a compound into immediate pressure starting to work his way down the Astro Stairs, the same process that was utilized by TSM on the last attempt here. They do have to take out utility in the process, and time is still a problem here. They haven't necessarily had a great amount of time to see what the site itself looks like in terms of player composition. Could lead to issues there. Football is too quick gonna be able to react to that the problem though is he seems to be the only one that can do that j9 along with another player from disrupt they're picking up kills the plant is going down successfully right now it's canceled there at the last second though geo has to restart it, it looks like things are okay for now as they pick up another kill start to isolate out the rotates but no now it's all down the geo gets the plant down though and brings it into a 1v2 so he's not done here just yet j9 he tries to swing over towards the doorway but can't take him out it now goes down to a 1v1 geo looking for the closeout but no doesn't catch shuttle above him the only thing that would stop up shuttle now would be timing to rotate back down but with still 28 seconds left for a counter defuse he's gonna have plenty of time to route over here pick up the counter and pick up the round for disrupt as they go ahead three to two i, I just gotta say this hey veli stop sleeping on my man j9 okay that man is a monster did you guys just see what i saw that was so so very impressive so very impressive i will say though just just a little thing a gunfight there at the end very very close i like how he delayed the time though to allow shuttle to rotate upstairs and handle that through verticality masterfully done by dg all the way into the post plant and just overall amazing play there by j90 much like some of his first showings on sonics when he was still there as a fill-in j9 is here to impress today and with a round like that he's certainly i think achieving that goal Beautiful stuff so far here. DG now up for the first time in the map, and are going to try to push that advantage even further with another round on Trophy and Statuary here to try to make it 4-2 at halftime. Attackers need to locate and defuse... All right, well, going to be rolling things around here after this round, as you're just saying. We're headed to Statue Trophy to finish things out here for DG on their defensive half. Villa's scoreline still looking like Villa, and trending towards the defense. DG's with some really, really creative holds. Uh, I think that the thing that stood out the most to me, though, is that we haven't went to Kitchen. DG True. just not favoring that site, which is a, a site that we see played quite often in North America. Seems okay, though, because their strategy, at least when it comes to living room, is relatively sound at this point. So that seems to be making up the difference for them as a lot of other teams leave living room out of the pool. Uh, probably, gonna, I, I would guess to say that we're probably going to see DG maybe incorporate Kitchen into the play a little bit later on in the season, especially if things go well for them today. Can't hurt to have that fourth site in your pocket. Uh, we've seen plenty of other teams start to do that recently as well. Mm -mm. 
Veli had to quickly run into my DMs to tell me, hey, I wasn't sleeping on J9. I know, I know he's good at the game. I know he's good at the game. So, uh, yeah, J9's good at the game, but uh, I, listen, I don't think that you can even sleep, sleep on Disrupt just looking at the team right now with that addition. I mean, you look over at the scoreboard, everyone's playing their positions, you know, beautifully right now. Shuttle, only one kill, but the one kill that he got won them around. So that, that's where those impact frags come in and we start talking about that. Over on TSM's lineup, though, everybody pulling their weight. I will say, though, that Shala has been pretty slow this game, but that might be something, you know, with, with just like a mentality change inside of TSM. We'll have to see through throughout this series exactly how they implement him and you know where his placing is inside of like their format and lineups when they are you know on offense and defense where that positioning is going to be but as of right now a little bit slower uh from Chala than what we're used to seeing definitely the case when it comes to that performance however I think we're going to get a much better picture for TSM once we switch over to the second half here a lot of play from DG seems to be throwing TSM off a little bit and Costed them quite a few players' lives, depending on the round that we decide to look at there. Either way, though, we've got a ping coming out to allow for confirmation on something. I believe on the other side of the wall here. Meep Jammer, there we go. That'll get rid of that. And allow for Geo to quickly open this up and give his team access to the statuary room. Now, for Reed, who was holding here, obviously can't really do that anymore. So he's had to back up, and he's going to put himself on the relative safety of trophy. And play that time as long as you can, especially when you have that ult in your hand. That thing can change an entire round with those 81 bullets that we all love to talk about so very much. But for right now, it's TSM trying to get as much intel as possible and figure out a plant spot here. So you'll have quite a bit of utility to go through, as well as an evil eye inside a statue that's getting a lot of intel on what's going on inside of Master right now. NJR in a very crucial position here, but I believe Chala's got a bead on him. Could be uh, not very, very fun here as Bolo, the rest of the squad pushes in, achieve with a nice nade kill on to NJR in that position. Very nicely done. Some more X Kairos go off and TSM cinches tighter around this site. TSM trying to get past that breach point that they've been struggling with in previous rounds as well. They can get right next to the site, but they seem to have problems taking out some of the initial holds trying to take duels with them. Bolo gets his team off to a good start, though. But unfortunately, Merc is going to suffer the fate of a trade when he tries to hop over Astro's stairs with Reed still very much looking in that general direction. The good news, though, Bolo is there to trade again. But the problem being, Shuttle has a Nitro Cell down below. The final two are going to be crew that's still alive on the inside of statuary they thankfully have solid control enough so to get a plant that's going to leave everything on shuttle who will be quickly shut down by chala we talked about how we might need to see him step up a little bit and he does so at the very end right there quickly stopping any chance of another 1v2 clutch from coming out there as a member of a dg tries to bring it back to themselves well, you give him the opportunity, and he shows you exactly why he's on the team, right? So, oh, very nicely done by every single side there. DG fighting back in every single way. Just kind of a misstep there by Reed to stand up while prone inside a trophy. But there's no way he could have possibly known Shala was inside of his uh, sites or playing concrete over there. So... Uh, nicely done by TSM. Again, just taking their time. I really, really like how TSM is using their information game to find these utility pieces and get rid of them before they try and go for these executes. Really, really leaning on that timer to do everything right. Check all of the boxes and then go for that plan. All right, folks. Well, the sides have flipped. TSM will get to breathe a little bit now as they don't have to worry about the constant ticking of the timer working against them here that's now dg's thing to worry about here is they're gonna be jumping onto the attack much like dg we're going to see tsm start out with an aviation games hold and reinforcements will look fairly standard here so far nothing crazy coming out of this setup there is going to be a little bit of an extension reinforcement onto some of the additional trophy and statuary walls that allows for extended roamers to play out here and have a little bit more freedom and more importantly safety in their own work uh, the quality of life change is really coming in and helping out pro uh, or the pro scene as well. That uh, reinforcement pool coming in, making up, uh, making setup just a little bit easier, especially on those extended roams. Like you guys can see, Bolo still setting up over inside of the uh, trophy area. Ended up setting down four reinforcements. This is really nice to be able to throw up as many walls as you possibly need. You don't need half of the team to rotate over to help you. Yeah, it's been a really nice change, even just in casual play. So probably something the pros are appreciating is, as it allows the uh, players that need to set up more utility than walls, the time to do that. And those that don't set up utility, well, they can do the walls. Reloading. 
<laughs> hey, man, I'll, I'll, uh, to get aggressive gonna... here from NJR is unfortunately going to get caught a little bit by Merc, but not so much that it leads to a kill. Only knocks out of a 40 of the HP from NJR. And just enough to make a slight difference inside of a gunfight. One bullet's worth of HP away. DG looking for the study attack here. Don't know how to... Well, that is going to work out. Have plenty of utility set up for TSM on this side. They might have to end up rotating here, but they're already committing. Quite a bit of utility. NJR's stun grenade goes off on the top of main. Might have a freebie, though, as Merc swings on main as well. Takes down the fresh meat on DG. J9 now down for the count here in round seven. That flash grenade as well, I think, comes in just surprisingly short of being able to affect Merc. That's why we see the swing from However, through that flashbang's teammate, try to go out and take down Merc, obviously to a very limited degree of success. Merc feeling comfortable with his current position, and of course, the time remaining does start to fall back. Does not need the support from Chala any longer, and he does not need to play the direct top stairs angle. So he fell back over to the bookcase corner. I don't know if he's staying there because it did look like he was falling back to 90 as well, but we'll get a good picture of that in a second. Yeah, he is going to stay here and hold bookcase corner, at least until he gets found by that drone. And now he's going to reverse course a little bit too, just in case it's an attempt to swing him. Really liking this setup from TSM. It's slowing down DG a lot, and especially with the shield play and the positionings that they have them, it's going to be very difficult for DG to break this unless they do have some soft destruction to deal with these Goyo shields. But as you guys can see, they're already through a lot of their throwables. Bolo's going to trade out NJR as well for Merc, so still relatively speaking on equal man count. It's in TSM's favor right now, though, in this four versus three. Yeah, I think all of the Candelas, at least all of the remaining ones, were used for that main stairs push there, so Reed does not have any left to use for the actual execute. Keep in mind, we still have 40 seconds left for DG to try and work that. They're going to rely mainly on their other forms of utility to get the job done. Unfortunately, they don't have much of it. It's basically just the X-Kairos charges and whatever shuttle can get in here to swing his hammer at. So, using that final X-Kairos charge on one of the main sight walls to give them better vision and now it's looking like they're going to have to try and play for a bookcase push. Problem is there is a player on the other side of that, but thankfully they still have smokes at a minimum to try and block that POV off. That doesn't mean that Achieve might not be able to get kills, though, if he sprays in from it. But DG are smart. They read into the fact this may not be the best idea and take the study route instead. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay working for very, very long here. Retro locked into a Malusi is going to get taken down by Bolo, and he'll get a quick 3k here at the end of the round to set TSM up for their first victory on defense. So well done by TSM, just drained the entire offense of every single utility piece they had, and they still had so much to offer at the end of that round. Still have to go through all those Banshees, the Goyo Shields, so many things for DG to try and, you know, uh, get rid of, but they just did not have the utility usage at that time. Low on man count, no utility, you're going to have to funnel, they try to throw it right into planes, doesn't work out for them. Overall, great round by TSM, playing off of that utility won them that round, it was nothing flashy just really good siege definitely the case and now we're finally going to get to see that kitchen round that's been eluding us at least for the first half here as dg decided not to play into it i guess them are feeling a bit more confident to trend themselves towards it so we will finally get around here from them and again much like all of our previous rounds uh nothing crazy coming out for me for me at least here just looking at the setup on psm side this is aligning pretty much with what we've seen from other teams so far as well Oh, yeah, for the most part, especially with the uh, pulse play coming in, uh, they're they're probably going to end up having some rumors downstairs, I would say, with Merc, especially on that uh, uh, vigil. For some reason, his name was escaping me for two seconds. But anyways, uh, having hit Merc on this operator and just run around in general is, is enough to slow down any team, especially partnered with the utility that they're bringing for the actual site. You know, the Banshees, as well as the Goyo Shields, some Nitro Cells, as well as some off-site information going on with Bolo, where they're going to be able to keep track of where the offense is pushing. This is going to give, you know, this entire round over to Merc's hands and see what he can do on this roam. How much time is he going to be able to waste? Is he going to be able to get the picks that mean something? We'll have to see. So both teams kind of have opposite priorities right now. Bolo is trying to see if anyone's going to go in for master or laundry room takes early on. And Disroth look like they're going into basement specifically to find Bolo because they expected him to be down there right now. So it's going to be a little bit of a mismatch in the intel gathering game to start off with at least. And also, NJR just hopping right into pantry there, it looks like as well, taking some early position for himself to work off of, hopefully within the next few seconds here. Reed also has success too, but NJR will be swiftly shut down when he tries to make a play. Looks like a very fast execute here for DG. You guys can see J9 still on the pantry stairs as well. Shuttle hops out of bike, but 
You can still hop back in at any moment. Laundry still available too. So very, very many options here for DG in this early round so far. Lots of action going on. Plenty of intel for J9 as well, oh, but he's no. nitro celled from Shala doing so much work off of this information. And I believe that was just based off of audio there as Bolo didn't even have the cardiac sensor out. DG, worse for wear, rolling into this minute and a half. Retro also taking some heavy damage as of a few seconds ago as well. He'll be brought down to sub 25 HP, meaning he is not in a good position to lead any gunfights. That's going to have to come to Reed or Shuttle once the execution rolls out. That's assuming, of course, they don't just want to essentially trade Retro right off the bat here. It all depends on the team strategy, of course. Either way, TSM feeling very comfortable about themselves, having successfully trapped two different members of DG inside of small enough rooms to where you can just kill them outright with a C four and they have pretty much no chance of escape nade goes in but unfortunately it reveals shuttle to geo and he strikes from the second floor quickly taking him out and bringing the man count for dg down even lower here leaving it all up on reed and a very very low hp retro well this is telling you exactly why tsm has a 75 percent win rate on villa they are dangerous especially when it comes into for these aggressive plays bolo picking up yet another now it's all down to retro and a one versus four but i don't think he's gonna be getting too far he's already made himself into sight here makes himself known now takes down bolo we're near the laundry door but still a one versus three on very minimal hp chooses to rotate out very smart idea here Needs to distance himself from that previous information, but seems that they're privy to it. Have a Banshee here on clock as well. That's going to mean that he's now known. Pre-fires, but has to worry about two angles. The Chief swings the door since he's on defense. Has no cause or concern for the Banshee. Doesn't have to worry about getting slowed down like the offense does and gets a nice kill with that T5. Good ideas indeed from the last man standing there on DG. Just unfortunately nowhere near the HP needed to try and facilitate any of those ideas so we will quickly see retro get knocked out there in the 1vx scenario another round goes into the pocket of tsm they sit just two more rounds away from closing out the first map and they're going to try to push themselves up on a map point by trying to win a living room round here all right well as you said we're headed towards living room and uh this is hmm Going to this site up against how DG has been playing, this is going to be a very, very weird one because DG so far has really liked these horizontal attacks. We haven't seen them favor too much vertical play so far. So I'm interested to see if they're going to go about it as in the way that TSM did. Go for the master take, split the map, and then try and force your way north to south into the A bomb site. Or are they going to actually clear out this top floor? There's a lot of questions still left to be answered. They are bringing the sledge, so that could be, you know, you know, telling of what's going to happen here in about 20 seconds. Definitely going to have the active upstairs hold from TSM. You got to have to do it, to be fair. So that is going to be alive and well for TSM in this yeah, defense as well. We'll get a better idea in a second here for who exactly is going to be the players looking to stay here and defend it. I've already got a pretty good idea as to who it is, but we'll get final confirmation in just a second. Don't have the pre-destruction done on those two soft walls over by the fireplace in the living room, uh, but that maybe just be okay as they're probably just going to leave it that way, leave that work up for the attackers. They don't have to pop that open if they don't want to. And yeah, I just want to make sure those didn't get reinforced and that they were playing it the same way that DG was doing so in the previous half. I think DG's previously was just footholds, wasn't it? Was it? I thought that... It might have been. I'm asking you. I have no I, idea. I, did, I was more focusing on whether it was soft or reinforced, but it's looking like uh, it's soft for this team well, as well. So. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely soft. Yeah. Not not hard. It's definitely soft. <laughs> I'm, moving, so. I'm moving us on from this topic immediately. Mark with a good Merc. stuff, Mark. <laughs> Finding out on J90 there. A beautiful find from him. Sets up some success for TSM right off the bat here within the first minute of the round. As they've taken the Zofia out of play along with any of the self destructor stun utility that would come with her. Not a massive loss in the utility department when you look at the overall team here right now, but still come in clutch sometimes in a late round situation. Yeah, cheeky peek there from Merc, as you were saying to the wall. But J9, now not, not having fun. Just definitely not having fun on this offense so far. So uh, DG slowing down a lot when it comes to the offense here on Villa. They look so dang good on defense. But again, that was all due to that patience that they seem to have locked down here. But now that they're the ones on offense and they have to make the map move, it's... Uh, not coming as easy, which is exactly what we expected here. TSM with a very similar setup as what we were seeing from DG on this living room site. Have the verticality inside of the uh, vault upstairs. Still have quite a bit of work to be done here for DG as well. I don't think they're ready for J9 to get picked off so early. They are not exactly hesitating, but just taking their sweet time getting up to the actual living room area. 
temperature, of course, being extra cautious in the event. We do have additional pulse player or another roamer set up downstairs, but we're not finding much. He's going to feel safe to transition over towards the mudroom, quickly take out the wooden barricade on the door leading into the site. We'll see the half reinforcements over in the vault and realize the difficulty that will come with pushing this. And now we finally see the soft destruction being done by DG that I was wondering about at the beginning of the round. So GSM, do let DG in there. It's going to be a relatively easy work of knocking open those two walls. However, pushing to the inside here this is where the difficult part shows up, and this is where TSM got tripped up more than once. Here comes the push, though. Going to try to make a play. Good start from NJR as he actually catches Bolo trying to rotate over in the red hole. Nearly some team damage coming out there for Retro, but he's got the trigger discipline to avoid it. Chala strikes nonetheless, however, and falls back into one of the side rooms. The player in Vault also swinging in for some more damage. Merc able to confirm a kill. Achieved gets the fourth as he knocks out NJR. And now, once again, Retro's been left alone versus the world. And he doesn't stand a chance in this round. Merc takes him out. TSM claim round number nine and get themselves up on a map point. This is looking like a more thought out TSM. Uh, we, we've been used to, for a very long time, TSM making some very aggressive plays that worked out, lean, leaning on that mechanical skill, but obviously being partnered with a, a very good Intel game. You know, Intel gathering, clearing out the roamers quickly, or just executing onto site so harshly that it's very, very hard to combat back. But this TSM today, especially on this Villa game play, looking very well thought out, especially on the Rome games here. Some nice early picks off some cheeky angles and then slowing things down, making the offense work through that timer and try and bide for that map control only to crush their entire soul. I, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing through from TSM so far. They've really, really switched things up. Yeah, I mean, even go back to the attacking side, they seemed very well aware of the issues that were occurring to them in the earlier rounds, and it did definitely look like they were trying their best to work around that. To, to be fair, like, with some limited success, given mm -hmm. what DG was able to pull off against them, but at the very minimum, it seems like they're very aware of themselves as a team right now, which is absolutely never a bad thing. So it's going to go back upstairs here for TSM now. We're going to go into the Aviation and Games room one final time. Maybe not the final time, but we'll see. Could be the final time, though, if TSM close it out here and now. Yeah, but also just going back to the, the, that topic just for a second, when, when it comes to Villa, especially for the offense, it requires a lot of bodies to get a lot of things done on this map. So when you start losing, you know, man advantage very early on, especially if it's important operators like, you know, Hard Breach or somebody that's carrying, a, you know, a pivotal piece of utility like your flank watch, like Nomad, then anything can go wrong because now you have to assign somebody to flank watch. They have to hold a drone there or do whatever. There's just so much to be concerned about when it comes to this map that if you end up losing man count early on, it's damn near impossible. It's very hard to fight out of that hole. All right, guys. Well, DG are on the board and are very much looking to take some early map control. At least upstairs over here towards Master Shuttle J9 and one other player are all bracing for that. Reed is holding the other side of the building currently looking to try to set himself up for success. And we'll do that by helping out his teammates with a little bit of a flank watch here through the connector window. Other than that, though, things are going to stay pretty quiet because there's not much in the way of resistance against this movement from DG coming out from the defensive side on TSM. You can obviously see that we do have the Malusi over there on the other side of the map with the majority of the DG roster. However, he's very much detached from that process and has already called it off as he's now falling back through the living room sites. Well, minute off the clock now is TSM still waiting on DG's first move. It's a master take for them. Clearing things out with the drones right now. Top red clear as they're working their way towards 90. Lot more patience this time around. Worried about that pick possibly happening once again. Here are the evil eye as well as the default cam as DG continues to make good progress. Flipping over to the other side of the script though, looking over at Merc, currently 10, 3, and 6. One of the best showings that we've seen from him in quite some time. Happy to be seeing the man doing so well again definitely the case and specifically on this map too because i can recall times going back to last year where this man was absolutely unstoppable on this map specifically so a good call back to that time back in 2019 either way this round is going to start successfully for dg as they are able to isolate out bolo and remove him from this equation Mark, you can see looking for a chance at revenge especially against any players that are trying to lurk on him in the study window but the timing isn't really working out so well and neither is the man count here as another kill is found for disrupt shuttle picking on achieved here and now Merc in a lot of trouble gonna have to try and swing against the tie but it won't work out he'll also be eliminated here by shuttle and dg really has full control at this point it's all just about the sight take now they've brought it down to a 5v2 Great adjustment there by DG to rotate two members over to handle study, locking away Merc and 
making him damn near unusable inside of this match point situation. DG still up on five man count now, going for the perfect round. J9 takes down one of the members. Chala, all that's left. J9 clearing it out as well. And that's going to be a flawless round for DG. Still have a lot to go, though. That's going to be round four. They still need to attack together two rounds to push this to overtime. TSM trying a whole lot and a whole lot of aggression, mainly, to try and get the better of DG, but unfortunately, just way too set up and way too well informed about the setup themselves from TSM for them to properly try and negate the aggressive pressure that was coming out from Disrupt at that point. So beautifully played by Disrupt, a masterclass round in itself, and TSM definitely not their game there, but they're feeling their defense on this site, though. Is They're going to dive right back into it. I, co I completely agree with the move. I, I think that the misstep there for TSM was strictly just not being prepared for DG to move bodies across the map. The the master take really wasn't working too well for them, and uh, even, even with that pressure there, you're still going to need somebody to watch study. Because a lot of the times, as we saw with Merc standing there, as we were in his perspective, standing on the hatch looking right towards the bus door through planes. So th that's that angle that you really have to worry about being contested when you're going, going for those vault door plants. So DG does the smart thing, rotates bodies over to help with study control, and they just take their time. That was the main thing. Merc got to a point where he was just strictly stuck on top of the hatch. There was nothing that he could possibly do besides possibly win a very un you know, unfavorable gunfight to get out of that situation. So it's the little things like that that DG are taking their time with now that are making all the difference. Let's see how TSM tries to wrap their head around that. A few more seconds here until we get to see exactly what DG are going to bring to the table. And as you said, TSM definitely trying their best to get revenge for the previous rounds here. Maybe a bit of a risk involved in it is if they fail on this one, on the repeat anyway, that's going to mean they only have one more round to try and close this out in regulation before DG has the opportunity to take it to OT. So, moment, TSM, thinking that they can double it back. A lot of the same flavors, though, at least when it comes to player positioning. You'll note Merc is still holding the extended study hold right now. Not going to be doing it on top of the hatch this time, trying to do it from the other side. But currently, this exposes him to anyone who may try to work their way in through the side window just to his left. We haven't seen that as of yet, though. But at least look at the perspective of Retro. Seems like they're well aware that something might be up just on the other side of that doorway. And Retro's alone here, so wouldn't be too smart for him to try and uh, pressure this at this point in time anyway. So more than likely going to be waiting on his action for quite a bit there. Oh, I really like this setup from TSM over here on the north side of the map, trying to slow down DG's master take as much as possible, committing Goyo shields as well as the clash here can delay so much time. Those Goyo shields each lining up with smokes gas grenades. So that means that 10 seconds to denial every single time that you pop one of those. And the longer that they take to clear this out, the longer it takes for them to get to site. We can also see some Banshees have been dedicated over here by Achieved. TSM fully selling out on this master hold. Although with a full send to hop over the trophy barrier, there he's gonna end up dropping down and work his way back up through red to get into this site. Won't meet much for in terms of resistance there from DG as no one has actually moved that far into the building as of yet. You can still see Reed holding the connector window at this point too and droning out to assist players like J9 and their push forward too. Thankfully though, DG, you know, despite the fact they're only just now starting to make progress on their map control, they still have a good amount of time. So they're not really in a rough position or anything like that. They finally maintained full control over the north side of the building and more than likely we're going to see some players shift over to help out Retro over towards study side as well. So DG are still in pretty good shape at this point. So I'll try to set themselves up for some kills and not lose players but that's unfortunately what doesn't happen here as we do see bolo picking up one getting air jabbed as well on the way back in but still makes it out without a single point of damage thrown onto him beautifully done by both members of tsm bolo still trapped downstairs with a crossfire by shuttle shuttle wins the second one tagged achieve down very low though one hp after that uh duo hop out there achieve prepping the window inside a bathroom and well, bolo doing what he does best clicking heads merc swings study balcony into the habana but the fast switch from retro takes him down the bearing nine gun that doesn't see too much play but ends up begging him a kill here in a very pivotal part of the round 20 seconds remain in this 3v4 
in the favor of disrupt but they haven't made too much progress to the towards the actual site they've got the walls open now but they still need this plant going into the last 15 seconds chala still one toxic bay but he's no longer alive it's down to achieve with very minimal hp oh, and geo but it's a frag grenade that ends up taking down njr shuttle oh what a botch my friend you're gonna have to rotate somewhere else as they bully geometrics on the shield inside of the vault achieve doesn't know where to go he doesn't even have a nitro cell to stop the plant and this one versus four very minimal hp once again as he runs right up red stairs but i don't see him getting too far the pre-fires bountiful but nothing working out for him so far chief looking for the capability to swing and that's the free one right there njr he knew he was a dead man long ago it's getting any kills beyond that that's going to be the impressive part and unfortunately achieved is just not able to rally for it retro shuts him down immediately on trying to swing out from his current position and off of that one, DG are going to bring it up to the final point of regulation time here as we head into round 12. Do we have a region that has every team being competitive? Uh, this is crazy. I don't want to speak on the other regions because because I'm out of no, no, I'm no. out of info on quite a few. Oh no no no, no. So. not not that. I'm just saying not like we're the only region, but I'm saying do we have a region that every single team is know. competitive? Because because prior to this, I mean, we had, we had some some teams that were quite, uh, if I may use Twitch terms, resident sleeper. Sometimes it happens, you know, people get into slumps. But I, I would like to say that everyone's a pretty pog champ right now. We're all in that last round, though. I hate to give this kind of critique because it always is looked at so just harshly. But for TSM, right, two specific instances in that round where their players made aggressive swings from what appeared to be safe positions and ended up losing the gunfights that they took. If they didn't take those fights, you have to wonder if the round would have looked different at the end of the day. Something definitely to reflect on, I think, after the game, though. As TSM still has another chance to shut this down here in the 12th. Ten seconds to go. Hey, it's swing or get swung out here in these streets, all right? <laughs> <Close> <laughs> so, right? But... <laughs> hey, nothing stopped Merc so far. The guy's got 10 kills, all right? And Bolo's got 15. That's, that's 25 kills. Trying to keep and up they're still in regulation. <laughs> Very impressive stuff so far from TSM, especially on the frag, uh, well, in the fragging department, excuse Whoa, me. What? Run out here in a trade. Achieve runs out, takes down shuttle, NJR with the immediate refrag, and that actually is going to be a massive hindrance for the offense, and I'll tell you exactly why. That's Sledge gone. Yeah. The Banshees are still in play, but Sledge offers the most amount of soft destruction on that entire team, and this is a site that you want to take vertically. We're looking to see exactly what else they possibly have. J9 going to be the saving grace if he can stay alive, those breaching charges are now worth their weight in gold. Achieved. Definitely taking a risk in that run out, but thankfully pays off at least via the operator choice as the trade, as you mentioned, for utility heavily favors the defense at that point. The loss of Belusi at this point is not a big deal at all, considering not only was he able to go one for one, but all of his utility is still alive and well somewhere on the map. Well, it's time for DG to react and see what they can do to change things up. Bolo already has a pre-placed out. Nitro Cell goes off, but J9 chilling in the pool. Oh, wait, no, that's a bathtub. Yeah, and JR and bath the rest of the squad still... <laughs> You'll get it later. It's fine. Oh, okay. You're, you're, not, you're not old oh, enough you yet, know what? son. No, no, no. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. <laughs> Listen, it. you can't ruin my jokes. Yeah, right, I'm trying to go. slip them in. <laughs> <sighs> John... Minute 30 and left on the clock. Guys, he ruins all my jokes. I like, I'm, I, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it entertaining sometimes. Oh man. Anyways, uh, TSM, DG, equal man count right now. Verticality going through for DG. Last breaching charge down for J9. And this is going to be plentiful here. This is enough for them to handle the, the things that they need to. But most of this verticality is leaning towards a kitchen take possibly pushing into China. We'll have to see exactly what their game plan is behind this. They could get some picks on the other side of the map or possibly flood laundry. There's there's a million activities. So rotate from NJR here as he's going to go down into, looks like the basement garage to try and swing himself up through the pantry stairs. Bolo is an immediate obstacle to that and will more than likely see him if he's had any audio cues as to the rotate from NJR. But NJR also going to do a little bit of self-drone work here. 
can definitely tell the time is going to start to pressure DG soon because it does very much look like that NJR is trying to set himself up for his own play here. He's going to have some support coming from Laundry, just judging from the silhouettes right now, but the push in the kitchen itself is all his business all day here. Great distraction, though, as it does pull Bolo off the angle to allow the Laundry player in. Unfortunately, to limited success, oh. though, as Bolo is still able to control that angle masterfully to shut things down on the final round of regulation here and give map number one over to TSM in 7 to 5 fashion if you're dg you can't even be mad about that scoreline that was such a well-played map